cameras. These guys are crazy. Do any of those cameras like make me look skinny? I look great, I'm refreshed, my beard is trimmed, I don't look tired. If poker goes wrong, I'm gonna be the best hairdresser around. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I'd be better than John. <laughs> I knew I was faster. So was, that was very fast. Um, we maybe lasted one and a half orbits um, in the first event. Not the best start you want to have. The, the only hand we really played was the cutoff raises, the small blind calls, and we're in the big blind with about 40 big blinds with four three of clubs. We call, so we're three ways to a flop. It comes king, six, five with two clubs. So we have an up and down straight draw and a flush draw. Um, small blind checks, we check the fucking dickhead bets. Fold, we raise, and then he jam. But anyway, he has ace king, and we lose. So it's a quick first entry. We started off with an amazing table. It was really, really good. We were chipping up. Things were going great. But then, as people were busting, good players were coming to the table with lots of chips. It's going well. I'm still in. First, second break, or whatever. I late reg, so I have 103,000. Bunch, we're just 1,200. My table's really fun. It's a mystery bounty, and I am, we're on like the third break of the day, and my brain is frazzled. All right, find the 1K mystery bounty uh, here at WSOP. It's our first WSOP event. And uh, since I'm here with you guys, it obviously did not go as planned. First WSOP events, kind of standard stuff. But with the Triton competition, it hurts a lot more. This means, I mean, it's not good, right? We just busted the 1K Mystery Bounty. Uh, we just busted the 1K Mystery Bounty and we cashed, so we got some points for the Punish Bad Challenge. So I was actually born here, not in this particular house, but I was born in Las Vegas, Nevada. I only lived here till I was four or five. Then I grew up in Ohio, Southeast Ohio. Kind of grew up as just a lower middle-class family, uh, but like a really fun. Started playing poker, I think during the moneymaker era. Started playing the, the $5 home games. It was just something we got really addicted to. We played almost every night and then I don't know, that passion carried over with me my entire life. 20 years later, I'm still at it. My dad was a big gambler, um, not like a like a problem gambler or anything like that. Fun fact, my middle name is Kino. Kino is actually like a slot game or something. The reason my middle name is Kino is actually very interesting. My dad and my doctor were gambling at a saloon. My dad won, I think 14,000, 17,000, something like that And Kino. The next day, my mom goes into birth and my doctor says, I'm not gonna deliver the baby unless you name your kid Kino while my mom is, <laughs> you know, my mom is great, but she's like, deliver this damn baby. <laughs> and uh, she's like, I'll, 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 his middle name will be Kino. I think it was supposed to be like Alexander or something kind of boring. So it ended up going from that to Kino. So my middle name is Robert Kino. -kun. The thing I would say I probably like the most about playing poker is the competition. Like I don't like being bad at things. And poker is one of those things where, yes, you kind of can't control your own luck, but you can control how hard you work. I'm quite good at recognizing where my skill level is and where I need to get better at. 
and then working on those areas like very quickly. I've been to Vegas, I think maybe once or twice, not a whole lot. I had always gone to the Strip, um, which, I mean, anybody that knows Vegas, the Strip was a lot different back then. I don't think the Bellagio was there, Aria was not there. I think it was like MGM and uh, Luxor and the Mirage, and you know, those were more the, the high-end Strip casinos, but we actually went downtown to Fremont Street, which is where they house the uh, World Series of Poker. I'd never been down to Fremont Street before. Um, for anybody that hasn't been down there, um, it's a different world. Um, it was then and it is today. I would recommend anybody that hasn't been down to Fremont Street to, to go give it a whirl. It's, a, it's an experience, that's about the best I can tell you. Lady and gentlemen, it is officially <laughs> challenge day here today at the Punter's Pad, and you will be playing the age-old bar game of darts. Okay. Mm -hmm. Simple concept. You're going to play 01. You have 301 points to basically work down to zero. The first player to hit zero on the nose will be the winner. The other four will then proceed to go to a vote on Twitter, and the person with the least amount of votes will then be forced to buy the winner in to the next event. Oh, what? <laughs> What's the next event? Good luck. Oh, no. Oh, shit. It's the main. <laughs> <laughs> Cheater, step over the line. They're scared. This is what happens. Nice, Ryan. <laughs> They're lucky I'm not playing. <laughs> That's the most beautiful one point you'll ever see though. Yeah, great job. Nice shot, Drew. This is one. Nice what? shot. No! Going into round four now. Rob at 220, leading the pack. Ryan not far behind at 227. I might win this while winning this. We'll see. All right, at the end of round eight, Ryan is leading just needs 28 points to take it down, followed by Robin. Fuck! Fuck! Sweaty here. That's it. Oh! Oh yeah. my god! Is that it? Yeah. Yeah. How do I do it? You see the fear in their eyes when we first started? After a grueling match that was wildly interesting to watch, we have crowned a winner. And that's going to be Mr. Rob Coon. Thank you, thank you. Now, with that being said, my friend, the rest of the punters are now in jeopardy of potentially having to buy this mug into the next event, and they're going to need your help. So check out America's Card Room on Twitter and place your votes now. So how I became a professional poker player is actually a very interesting story that most people don't know. A long, long time ago, poker stars used to have like these free rolls, and I played this one in particular every night, and it would give you to a $55 ticket, the nightly 55, and eventually I ended up winning and playing the $55 ticket. Now this is where you say, oh man, you must have made a deep run. No, I busted like three hands. So <laughs> then when I actually started making money, I deposited and deposited and deposited. I actually I deposited 107 times just on full tilts, but I don't have the, uh, Oh, I deposited $20 and ran it up and never looked back. No, I deposited 8 billion times. And then eventually, uh, actually, how I built a bankroll is very funny because ACR is doing this now. It was called the Daily Double in Full Tilt. And I deep ran, I want to say it was like a $27 buy-in and like a $10 buy-in or something around those stakes. So I wasn't playing big. I final tabled one. I got like final two tables of another. Didn't think anything of it. Didn't know there was some kind of bonus or whatever. I woke up the next day and I had an extra like $1,000 in my account. 
I call my buddy, uh, who's my actual current roommate, Sam, and one of my best friends. And I said, dude, somebody accidentally sent me a thousand dollars. Um, like I have a bankroll, like let's go. And then he figures out I won the daily double. And then, then I started running really good and I won a lot. When I went to college, uh, my second year of college, my roommate's girlfriend's brother was a professional. After I, you know, met Sam and ended up hitting the daily double, like I was saying, had a little bit of a bankroll, and then I really spun that up to maybe twenty thousand or something like that. I stopped going to class. I told my mom, I said, "Hey, mom, I'm making, you know, quite a bit of money with poker," and she didn't really like the idea of me being a poker player. So I said, "Okay, I'm going to propose a bet." If I can make 50,000 a quarter, I could drop out of school. She said, all right, I accept the bet uh, with the condition that after you drop out of school, you have to make 20,000 every quarter after that, where you have to enroll back in school. That week, I won a tournament for 55,000 and I was so happy. Called my mom, you know, she honored the bet. She was very excited. So I drop out, go back home and I, win 20,000 next week. So there's my next quarter. So I got two quarters off, right? Well, what happens a month after that? Black Friday. All my money is locked up. 99% of my net worth, I wanna say it was like something around 99,000 was locked up. And I said, mom, look, I don't have an option. I can't cash out. Like I have to move. So I went down to Mexico in 2011. It's uh. Yeah, it was quite a journey to, to get where I'm at, but I wouldn't change a thing. My name is Rob Kuhn, and I'm a professional poker player for America's Card Room. I tried to set the trap, and I trapped myself. All right, break number two here after level eight of this $600 deep stack here at WSOP. Uh, I am currently sitting on like 53K from 30. Uh, been a little bit swingy, no real notable hands, just kind of picking up some small pots. Headed to the Paris side because I late reg and I have to walk over there. So come with me. All right, so we're doing good. We're at. 170K, you start with 30, it's going well, a lot better than the other one. These walks of shame never get old. And I'm walk of shame, I mean, I busted the tournament. So I'm out of the 600. What's up guys, back in the fucking loser's lounge again. Uh, pretty tilted right now, this is our second event we played and we did not make it to dinner break once again. So I busted. Drew busted, Rob is our last hope. We're both playing online uh, on our phones. That's what this is. Yeah. Battling in the 300. We've already lost about a quarter of our stack. Nothing better than a $300 live tournament, 10 handed poker. On a bit of a roller coaster right now. I'm not sure how long we'll be at this table. We'll see. I'm still in. I know it's amazing. Parasite late reg. Because you guys I have a late reg in. <laughs> the fucking bag, baby. Back tomorrow, 10 a.m. Let's do some fucking work. <laughs>